Shino, a close friend of Ovon, second in command in the Twilight Brigade, and a person Haseo has become quite attached to, is PK'd by a strange player named Triage, who has a familiarity about him. But it turns out Shino wasn't just PK'd, but she was put into a coma after the incident. And it's only then here, when we finally think we have an established plot, that it really fucks you over. Aseo goes all emo about Shino's death and then he wants power so he can beat Triage, thinking it will solve the problem. And when he does get power, he goes all psychotic, which for a while was just plain weird. But this simple task is lengthened out by so many unnecessary and boring episodes focused on other characters. Speaking of characters, let's have a look at them. While the quality of characters is still good, well, like I should expect from a dot hack title, some characters are completely pointless. In fact, Tabby, one of the supposed main characters of the story, while she provides some of the only funny moments, does absolutely nothing to advance the plot. Even she realises this by the end of the series. More annoying is the characters they give depth to, seem to have importance, and then they just stop playing so they're never seen again in the series. What a slap in the face! More of a personal opinion, but music wasn't my taste again either. They just seem to stick with a lot more of that lyric sung songs, which bother me when I'm trying to listen to the damn characters speaking. And I think there were even more of these type of songs in the series. But my main problem, and where my grab lies with this anime, lies in the ending. Why? Because it ends on a fucking cliffhanger. That's right, you're not told how it ends. Bullshit! Dot Hack Sans had a few problems with plot, but at the end of the series, it gives you a satisfying ending which concludes they're making it worth all the money you spent on it. But what about Dot Hack at the end of six DVDs? It just says to you, hoo, 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 if you want to find out the end, you go buy the games. Suck my balls, Banda! I'm a fire in my laser! <laughs> well, to be fair to this anime, one improvement was the animation. This could be for a number of reasons, perhaps they had more money for the budget this time round, or it was the new style they were going with, cause this, gener this second generation probably has a more darky and edgier look, probably because this, this, this world was created from the fragments of the original, but whatever the case, the special effects, the environments, the character designs, stuck with the usual dot hat look, were improved and animated well. This series also probably had the most action scene so far, not including the games. It was better than previously, but there's still room for improvement, especially with the skills and magic the different classes have available, which they should be able to fit in somewhere. If I had to sum up the two fair things I did like about this series, which I did really enjoy, was the character Orvon. God damn what an enigmatic character. He talks in cryptic metaphors, is rarely seen, and when you do see him it only raises more questions. It's only at the end of the series when you realise just how more important he is. And the second thing I liked was the theme song, entitled Happy Go Around by Fic Fiction Junction Yuka. I really like this opening, definitely the best music out of the series that I've heard. And it's actually the tune you heard at the beginning of the review. To sum this up, 1 out of 5 stars. Don't get this unless you already have the game or no place where you can get it, because other than that, it's completely pointless. As you may expect, after the anime comes the games, titled simply Dot Hack GU, unlike the originals had an extra name depending on which volume it was. The series is three volumes long, and also like the original, is available for the PlayStation 2. It starts at the end of Dot Hack Roots, retelling the last few events before continuing the story as Haseo focuses on hunting down Triage. As his potential is awakened, he is recruited into a guild called Raven, who ask him to help them track down Ada, a new type of virus infecting the world. He joins in hopes of finding something out which will help him to the beat Triage. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't been able to play this game, but that's only due to the game never coming over to the UK. Came out in the US as far as I know, but not over here. Which is even stranger considering the fact that the first line of Dot Hack games came out of here. But I've looked around, watched some videos, did research, so I think I've got a bit of an understanding now of how it looks. Speaking of research, here's a quick random fact for you. Haseo's voice actor was changed during the transition from anime to game. In the game, he's voiced by Yuri Lufanel, which, considering how emo Haseo was acting in Dot Hack Roots, is a pro boot, because this is the same guy who voices Sasuke in the Naruto dub. From what I've seen, it plays similar to the original. 
There's root towns, the chaos gates to go into the field and dungeons, and then important quests, to cut, put, cut scenes are played for story purposes. In this sense, I can only assume the games suffer the same problem of repetitiveness through going through the same thing over three games again and again. However, this might not be so bad. One of the complaints of the old games I had were the graphics. I guess they must have heard that complaint and wanted to slap me around the face, as they've proved me wrong in this version. There's such an improvement. The environments look great, towns and fields, monsters, bosses look more epic, and the character models are done so much better. They finally don't look like they've got that glazed look on their face all the time. Cutscenes, no complaints, stunning. This Now this is showing the capabilities of the PlayStation 2. I'd also put this down to, again, the group having more money to spend in creating the game. Again, music. It's improved a bit since the last version, a bit less boring to listen to, but whether it gets repetitive all the time, I'll probably have to play the game myself. And the important boss battle music sounds great. The actual gameplay is an improved version of the original. Like the original, monsters can be seen in the field, giving you the option to avoid them. Your equipment and weapons determine your magic, and you can temporarily pause the game to access special moves, items, etc. But what has changed is the fact it seems to be more fast paced, probably due to the improved AI, and this does make it more fun to play. The gameplay now gives you the option to use more powerful combos called Rengeki when a player has done so much damage to their opponent. And when a morale bar is full, you can use an Awakening, which is like a free man move with all the people on your team, which you can use for a short amount of time. Another neat change is the ability to switch weapons, as in the old game this was a problem as you could only stick to the same class, which again lessens the repetitiveness of it. When in the field, you can now also encounter other players, where you can save them from either Ada or other PKs, which keep, which gives you some extra rewards. Special battles against the Ada enter you into an avatar state, in which players play more like a shooting game. You can dodge attacks, shoot bullets at the Ada, or you can go in directly with a melee weapon, which is pretty cool to play. If you get bored of the quests, which I'm sure you would at times, they now offer you mini-games, which include tournaments, competing against other computer players, and even a card game based on both versions of the world. All these nice additions are put together with a great new storyline and the same quality of cast of characters of the game. So while the game might still suffer from repetitiveness like its original, again this might just be player's preference on how boring some things get for them, but the improvements made to this game makes it a much more playable and enjoyable game. If you're a dot .hack fan, I would go and find it. I'd give it 4 out of 5. Last but not least, the final title that we're looking at is a manga called GU+, which is the equivalent of the first generation's dot .hack XXXX, a manga which tries to adapt the game into a manga with a non-canon story. Like the one before it, I think they left too much out, but it's done better in this time round. It's condensed into 4 volumes instead of 2. The art style has given a change again, to emphasise a new and darker world. In fact, some of the pictures in the later volumes can be pretty graphic. Again, it has the same problems as the last generation, but they've learned and, they're making, and they've made improvements. I'd give it 3.5 out of 5. And with that, ends our look at the Dot .hack timeline. Bloody hell, this was more work than I expected. There was still plenty of titles I could tell you about, such as Dot .hack Zero, which follows a new player and shows what happened to Sora and Tsukasa after Dot .hack Sign, or maybe Dot .hack 4 Kuma, which is a short manga containing both generation characters having a laugh at itself, and there are many titles taking place after the GU games, but there's no point looking at titles that aren't even overseas yet. As a fan of the series, I think Dot .hack is a great franchise, which from this review, I realise is still improving as it goes along. To me, they always have the great story, but there's always one thing or another that holds it back from being up top with popular titles. I mean, a manga based in a video game setting is going to attract a lot of crowd anyway, so if they keep tweaking at it, maybe one day they'll make it up top. Just before I wrap this up, if I had to pick a favourite title... Well, I can't really pick one, but probably between Another Birth, Legend of Twilight, or AI Buster 2. But I would definitely would like to get my hands on the Dot .hack GU games. And for characters, favourite characters, let me think. Orvon, you enigmatic bastard. Mistral, for her cute and go-happy personality. Aseo, well, he was a bit emo in Dot .hack Roots, but his heart's in the right place and he improves in the games. And Black Rose, who makes a good support character for Kat, even though she has her own problems to deal with. And that's all I've got to say for now. 
As usual, I just want to say thanks for listening to my review. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things. If you have your own opinion or thoughts on a character, title, series, etc., feel free to leave a comment. And that's pretty much it. This is Ace of Space to Win, ending my special Full House manga anime review on the Dot Hack timeline. Till next time.